Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here, bringing you another shop vlog. This one's starting at 5 p.m. Last guy just left the shop, I get this place to myself. I spent the morning in a swimming pool with my kids at Grandma's house today. That was super, ni super nice. So I'm doing a, a late afternoon slash late evening shift today. So I'll be here for a while. Um, it is hot. It is really hot. I'm like sweating down my back just sitting here. Um, it is, it's summer, it's hot. That machine pumps out heat, that machine pumps out heat. This one's warmish. Uh, the Kern chiller pumps out heat and it's super hot outside. It is like really, really hot inside. So we've been, as I mentioned before, we've been looking into air conditioning quotes and we got one solid quote in. We're waiting on another one back that we'll get this weekend. And then uh, today's Friday. So by Monday, we're gonna pull the trigger. We're gonna make it happen. So once you get the two quotes in, we've all agreed by Monday, it is happening. And um, I'm, it's good, it's good. We need it, we need it for the guys. Um, nobody wants to work in this kind of heat. And we get the choice. I mean, I know a lot of people do work in hot, sweaty environments, but we don't want that. We have the choice not to do it. So I wanna make that choice. And even just selfishly, for me, I wanna work in a nice shop. That's why we make it so nice. And then, and then we are much more likely to make amazing products when we're happy and, and comfortable and feel amazing. So, yeah, that's happening. I'm, I don't like sweating sitting still doing nothing. I don't mind sweating, but when there's no work for it, when there's no reason, yeah, useless. So that's wasted sweat. Um, okay, right now, I got an interesting one for you. 6C Tools. This is a... Are they German or Swiss? They're Swiss. I see the Swiss logo right there. Um, they make PCD end mills. These are polycrystalline diamond end mills, AKA super duper fancy. Look at that. So I believe, uh, obviously the black part is PCD diamond. I believe it's brazed or something to the shank and uh, shank is carbide and the beauty with this thing is it can mill really really hard stuff for example carbide so today we're gonna mill some carbide Ooh, it's so exciting um, okay let me get some props props acquired so a while ago I want to say 2015 16 something like that um, even, even older than that, actually, now that I think about it, but... Anyway, around 2016, I, I, I finalized a system for putting in the detent ball on our knives. Now, I will demonstrate on my friend Brad Southard's Mini Tolk. This is the only custom knife that I have that's not our own. Uh, Brad gave this to me as a gift after we gave him a Rask. That was a gift as well. Um, on his, I engraved... Be what did I say? I said, not for sale because Grimsmo something Southern. Oh, the serial number on the blade was hat, like a number sign Brad. And uh, yeah, that was cool. So he made me this as a thank you and thank you, Brad. This is the only custom knife I have that's not our own. I already said that, but I love it. It's beautiful. So anyway, I'm going to describe on this. So the detent of a knife, some of you guys might not know, most of you probably do. That is the little, the, the pop that sucks the blade closed and keeps it closed so that it doesn't open up. You can see I'm missing a screw on this one, um, but I don't care. I love it anyway. So the detent of a knife has to be amazing. There's a lot of tolerances that go to it to make it work and to make it pop and to make it do what our knives and what Brad's knife does. Now his doesn't quite drop the way that ours do, um, but he's got a lighter, skinnier blade, and he's got a couple different features and a fairly heavy lock bar tension on this one, so I'm not surprised. It's, it's not bad at all. Uh, we just like ours to drop a little bit faster than that, a little bit heavier. And, and like I said, it's probably got too much lock bar tension. I can lighten that up and, and get that drop. But anyway, the tolerances of a detent ball, where it's placed, exactly how it's placed, when you press it in, if it flares the material, how far it's pressed in, how you prep the, the top surface. Um, some people leave them, we like to grind them flat. So I actually have, I think I talked about this in a, a video, a couple videos ago. Uh, we have this flat grinding disc that I had custom made. 
So our detent ball right here There's our focus. I will use a pointing device. That is our detent ball right there. You can see that it's flat. It's actually a little bit rounded on top because after we flatten it, uh, it goes in the tumbler and the tumbler stones do actually blend it ever so slightly. Uh, for better or worse, I don't see any downsides to it. So anyway, in a handle, the hole is spotted, it's drilled, and it's chamfered um, on the Mori. We'll probably simplify that a little bit on the current. And then we manually put a ball in place, and then the machine comes in with something like this, an end mill. Actually, on the, on the Mori, it's a drill bit that's upside down. There's a dimple on the bottom of not this one, but of the other one. And the machine spins ever so slightly, and the machine presses that down to an exact certain distance. And then the probe comes in and touches the surface and touches the top and confirms the, the distance between the two. And I usually oversize it the first time. And then I come in and I press it again using math in the computer to press it the final distance. So let's say picking, picking useless numbers here, because I don't want to give you guys my numbers. That's our special, that's one of our secret sauces. Um, Let's say you press it in and it's sticking up 50 thou, but you want it to stick up 45 thou. Uh, so it knows it has 5 thou more to go on the second press. So it just presses, you know, same as before, minus 5 thou. And that works, oh my gosh. That system has been so, so incredibly reliable for the past four years. Um, shout out to my buddy Rob Lockwood. I remember calling him on the phone in 2016 and he helped me um, debug the last of the variables and, and math and macros and things like that to pull this off with the probing and everything and set it and forget it. It's been so, so good now. So obviously I wanna transfer that onto the Kern and do it better. So, like I said, on the Mori, we're using a, a drill bit, a high-speed steel drill bit that I machined a little dimple into the bottom, but that drill bit is soft. It, it kind of wears over time. It's slightly inconsistent. The, the pressing method is self-correcting, so that's fine but I want to do it out of carbide because current and because I can and because I know the current can mill carbide and because 6C makes these epic um, PCD tools. So the theory is I want to machine that dimple into the bottom of this using the PCD very, very slowly. I, th I, I gotta check my speeds and feeds and make sense of them, but I think it's very fast RPM and extremely slow feed and extremely slow um, like light depth of cut and everything. So I want to machine the dimple. I might even machine the surface to be perfectly flat um, so that when we probe it, it's accurate to the dimple. And yeah, that's, that's my first goal today. And then second goal, once the ball is in the handle, I'm gonna use this guy, I'm gonna flatten it. Honestly, if I can do those two things tonight, I'm winning. Um, it's five o'clock, I, I can be here till 10, 11, 12 o'clock. I have, I have permission from home to be able to do that because we took the time this morning together. So. Um, if I have time after that, then I have a list of about 42 other things that need to get done, and I will start tackling that as we go. It's kind of hot. Okay. So the other day, yesterday I think, uh, I was able to mill and thread mill those holes and get the rest of the features in here. So the first hole that you see, the lowest hole, that's the detent hole. That's where the ceramic ball is gonna go. And then these are threaded holes used for later uh, purposes. Lock bar insert and things of that nature. I've talked about our, um, the ceramic bearings that we use in previous videos. These are American made. They're grade three quality. They're insanely round, insanely accurate. Very good quality ceramic. Uh, I love using these and they're green. Most of them are black. Green is epic. I don't know why they're green, but it makes them cool. So that one of these goes in the D10 hole and we press it in. And we also use the same balls for our bearings. This guy's been cleaning these. He said it took several clean cycles in the ultrasonic cleaners to get them, uh, get them super clean. Anyway, 10 balls go into each one of these. These turned out awesome. We made, I don't know, we made 2,000 of these or something. They went really well. 
And not only that, but each saga pen has three of those ball bearings in it too. That's the heart of the mechanism. One, two, three, inside here. So you can see here, this is my section view of the end mill. And these are my mock little tools. So that's, I think that's how deep I want the dimple to be. And this tool, the bigger of the two will obviously fit. So I gotta figure out how to, how to machine that. If I wanna put a little radius right there, I don't know yet. So the purpose of having a dimple inside the carbide is to kind of self-center. So as it's pushing the ball down, and this is rotating because you want to rotate it. You want to be able to rotate the tool so that you're not putting lateral pressure on the spindle bearings. This is something I've been doing since the Tormac days. And uh, you know, back then guys would comment and be like, oh, you're going to dent your bearings. On the Tormac, I didn't care, really. Um, but I still, on the Tormac, I learned to spin the spindle. On the Mori, uh, it's a beast anyway. But if I spin it at 100 RPM or whatever it is, then while it's pushing down, it's no different than drilling a hole. And Pushing that ball into that detent hole is no effort whatsoever. And on the Kern, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna spin the spindle, you know, fairly slowly, and I'm gonna press it down, and it's not gonna take a lot of force. And as long as you're rotating the spindle, you're good to go. So you need that dimple to help ensure that the ball doesn't pop out and it stays lined up, and also just kind of cups it and supports it. So you don't want a round ceramic ball, which is brittle, to go up against a flat surface, otherwise you're gonna you're gonna squish it, you're gonna crack it or something. So you need a cupped surface to be able to do that. So that's what we're trying to do here. Look at this, I'm already, I'm already sweating through the front of my shirt. I'm, I, got, I got a front sweat going on. Anyway, so last night uh, when I was out on my walk, it was like midnight and I was thinking about this press and stuff or this, this detent, this carbide grinding. So I sent a DM to 60 Tools on Instagram and I sent a DM to my buddy Marv who works at Kern and uh, he's done a lot of carbide milling too. And I said, how do I even use this thing? What are my speeds and feeds? What are my depth of cut, width of cut, axial, etc." And so they sent me back a bunch of uh, uh, confusing numbers and metric that I gotta figure out and see what they mean. Um, but also said, Marv said, run it with an air blast. No coolant, air blast only. And to be honest, I don't, I don't know how to turn the air blast on on this machine. I haven't done it yet. So that'll be fun. Can't be hard, it's probably just an M7 or something. But yeah, so we gotta do that. And then he said, you can do a coolant blast at the end to wash the dust away, the chips. But uh, yeah, no coolant while milling. And I'm not sure why, but that's what he said. So I'm gonna trust him. Oh, oh man. It is not even fair how cool it is in here with air conditioning. Oh, it's huge difference. I don't have a thermometer. I wish I did. I gotta fix that. Just getting some water. So just like last week uh, when we did Peter's pen button, we're using the V-block with the lathe tool holder and an ER collet. And I need a good way to mount this guy. So this is the quick and dirty way. Mount it about like that. I'll tighten that up properly. And then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna probe that so that the machine knows exactly where it is and probes the surface. And then we'll be able to use that ball mill to deck the surface, you know, 3D it or whatever, and then mill the, the hole chamfer on the outside should be golden I've never machined carbide before this is kind of exciting so for all you machinist guys out there pro tip this this is what's beautiful about a pallet changer it doesn't have to be a pallet changer any zero point work holding system where you can remove it and put it back repeatedly does this but so the the rask pallet right there the knives I'm not done with that yet I, I need to play with something else I want to put that away I want to be able to put it back later so the pallet's just gonna change it, it's gonna park it in here, and then it's gonna grab this pallet, and I can put it in there, and it's all gonna be repeated perfectly, locally, zeroed, every, <clears throat> everything. Whereas a lot of times on the Mori, since we don't always have good zero point work holding for everything, if I'm setting up a weird thing to play on the machine or to like figure something out or to put a vise in there and start picking away at some material, the machine is completely tied up for the entire day whether I'm touching it or not. It is stuck in that setup. Whereas having this just swap back and forth, you know, any Pearson palette, any uh, Lang, any fifth axis zero point work holding does that. I'm just saying, do it. Zero point is, I, I never really saw the benefits until I started to use it, and it's.
air gun just fell off. Holy cow. Oh. I caught that on video. The air gun just exploded. Uh, we're okay. Let me put some actual glasses on here. Look at this. I'm, I'm sorry, Sylvan, but your gun just fell apart. I like this thing. What the heck? All right, let me deal with this. was exciting. I, I honestly hope that was on video in the background. Um, Alright. I do not trash talk people. I do not, uh, you know, make fun of companies. I have all the respect for any company out there that's doing good work. I actually really like this air gun. It's got some sweet, it's got a 3D printed nozzle tip that, that distributes the air. Um, there's a word for it. I can't remember what the word is. It like creates more velocity and it's it's cool. We've had it for a year, year and a half, something like that. But this is garbage. This is completely not acceptable. Maybe it's freak, uh, I don't know, man. It's just a barb fitting. I don't know, so I will let them know. Um, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying it's, you shouldn't get it, because I liked it up until this very moment. And I probably still like it, but I need to talk to them about this, because what the heck, that could be very dangerous to somebody. So, to be determined, um, maybe or maybe not, I'll let you guys know how it goes, I don't know, but, uh, Wow, surprising. Dude, manufacturing is literally 64% problem solving, 20% physically making stuff, and whatever's left just figuring things out, which is problem solving. It's, it's fun, I like it. But man, stuff like that just pops up on you. You know, yesterday, the lathe peeing all over the floor. Didn't expect that, didn't know it was gonna happen. Stuff like that happens, at, look at this drip, this sweat. Um, happens at least once, twice, five times a week, completely random. As you build better systems into the business, then less and less happens. But nobody would have expected an air gun to explode out of nowhere. So anyway, so regarding that air gun, uh, duh, now I remember the, the two terms used to, to describe the thing. It's got a laminar airflow coming out the nozzle, which is pretty awesome, and then I'm 90% sure um, it doesn't say on the website, but that it uses a Venturi action to suck in more air through those grooves on the outside and push it forward. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Flipping mic around. So this is right from their website. Normal air gun is like that, and their air gun is like that. So you get a more laminar flow, straight air coming out, and you also get this suction effect as the air comes out these little micro nozzles pulls it in and it's supposed to be quieter too quite a bit quieter and, and it kind of is now what I really like you know that one has on the Mori has always been like okay this is the impressive one which is possibly held on in the same manner we're gonna keep that in mind but this nozzle right here is a beast so we use this for drying off parts out of the sink look it's this is me trying to hold it still. Genuinely, as hard as I can, trying to hold it still. It's got some power to it. And it's quiet and it shoves a ton of air. And let me get that sweater or that shirt right there.
Yeah, and it, it, it makes like a blade of part of air so that as you're blowing a part off, it's nice. I, I love that nozzle, it's really good. This, however, um, this section right here, I'm kind of suspect about. Step. I got my probe in there. I'm going to probe the center line of that pin. So we simply go into touch probe. We go into probe circle. We're doing an outside circle. I've got a quarter inch diameter in there. And then I'm starting from this direction. And then I just hit cycle start. Done. And then I hit entry in preset table, overwrite, end, end, and then preset management. And look at that, I'm with, within one tenth in X, and I manually put that thing in there side to side. So I'm within one tenth of X center line, and then Y is obviously quite a bit off because of the V block, and then I did probe the top as well. I just realized it's a little quieter than it should be. Something's up with this. Fault tube feeder. Are we out of bars? Bar stock moving during headstock reverse. What are we looking at here? We're not out of bars. There's two bars left. Bar stock moving during headstock reverse. That might be a mismatch or something. I'm not sure what that means exactly. Okay, I think I figured out that one. Uh, it's not a big deal. Sky actually said he was having a similar problem earlier today. So that was the end of the bar. The bar loader was trying to remove that bar from the guide bushing and like, like throw it away and put the new one in. Um, but because because I didn't have a setting set, there was probably a little burr on the end of the bar and it couldn't get its way through the guide bushing. Um, so there was a, a little problem. Now there's a little, probably one little flag in the code that will put a chamfer on the end of the bar on the last bar before it pulls, the last part before it pulls out so that, uh, so it comes out smoothly and cleanly. And I, I bet you this is an older code. I bet you I don't have that little, that little flag set. So I'll fix that and then never happen again. Oh, it is hot. I just spent the past like 45 minutes outside chatting with Eric and uh, cause it was nice and cool and like beautiful outside. And then I come back inside and it's really, really hot in here. Anyway, let's make some progress. All right. It's late, it's hot, I'm cranky, I'm exhausted, and uh, I can't think straight. However, all right, so I have mounted our PCDN mill in the machine and I'm trying to check for run out. Now it's a four millimeter shank. All the Regal Fix stuff that I bought was in an inch. Because I'm like, I don't use any metric tooling. This guy comes in in a metric tooling. I have to use an ER collet. And uh, the run out is atrocious. Like literally not usable. That goes from just over zero to almost two. So like a thou and a half of run out, which is bonkers stupid. I wouldn't even run a carbide big end mill with that much. I've already tried to take it out and re-rotate it again, and I don't know. Getting the same results with the rotation. I should probably just order up a four millimeter PG call it for the proper Rego fix holders, but that takes a while to get here. They might have it in stock somewhere. It's tough because when I'm not at work, when I'm at home, 
when I'm out and about, when I'm thinking about stuff and what I gotta do, it's like, okay, I gotta do this, and I gotta do that, and I gotta do that, and it's great. Okay, I can do that. I can go to work, let's go, let's go. Um, and then I get to work and things just take forever. And I don't even get to accomplish like a couple things, sometimes. I don't know, I'm cranky, leave me alone. Anyway, point is, um, with that much run out, I'm not running that tool. The, the, the step over requirements is about two thou, and it's got two thou of run out, so every, rot every cut, one flute's gonna do all the work, the other flute's gonna do zero work, that's bad. That's really bad run out. Um, I don't know what to do, I guess. I guess better get, better get her call it, get a better call it, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking here. See, the problem is, everyone's in love with their own idea. Me especially, I love my own ideas. I want to do my own ideas because they're fun and I just want to make them happen. Except the problem is I fall down these rabbit holes where these ideas take hours and hours and hours and I don't really put any thought into doing a different idea. Because I'm like, that's my idea, I want to make it work. So anyway, I'm sitting here, scratching my head, and I go, John, John, what's the goal here? The goal is to make a rask. The goal is not to do it perfect. The goal is not to have the greatest solution in the world because it's awesome. The goal is to make a rask. Why don't you just, if the PCD end mill's not working, take a carbide ball mill and take a high-speed steel tool, just like I've been doing on the Mori for four years, take a freaking... Let's see here. Drill bit. Whatever. Um, better one than this. You can machine high speed steel with a regular old carbide end mill. So I can face the end of that and I can plunge a 116th ball mill into it. It would take me like minutes to get this done. And then I have a dimply surface that I can now press a ball in. Is it going to last forever? Well, I don't know. This one is. Dude, I'm just doing that. I'll, I'll be done in. Watch this. Okay, I think it's going to take five minutes, but realistically, it's going to take a lot longer than that. But, where did Sky put it? How long is it going to take? Okay, this, this is good. This makes me feel good. I'm waking up. I'm not like, can't think straight sleepy. I'm just bored. It's hot. It's not working. Anyway, let's go. Do a little time lapse for you. We're so far at two minutes and eight seconds. Let's see how that works. I mean, it's not the best finish. I can hear it kind of vibrating a little bit. Maybe I should, instead of side milling, maybe I should come in and just face mill it really lightly. But anyway, it's coming super fast. All right, realistic here, real time. 34 minutes. I'm not fast, but it's done. I'm just gonna run it again here with no coolant to show you guys. That's all she wrote, man. Fast, easy, using the tape, tapered engraving end mill. We have ourselves a dimple. It's done, easy. Move on. It has been literally six hours. Well, maybe five hours since I filmed last. 
But things are going good. It's kind of late. So the probe goes in, it measures the height of the detent ball and the surface of the handle, and then my upside down drill bit pusher thingy spins at 50 RPM, or maybe it's 100, uh, presses the ball in, and then the probe comes back in and measures it again and gives me a comparative analysis. Check this out, this last one here. Oh, that worked. Okay, so this last time was 5,000 deeper than before. That's good. That's very good. Uh, I think this works. All right, so that disc grinding wheel is mounted up in the machine. And I stopped it at the exact height so that I could kind of get my face in here. and see, see the clearances. See how much, uh, you know, there is gap, I'm close, it's good. So that's just gonna do an arc and it's gonna grind the top of that detent ball off, part of our secret sauce. And then I'll probe it again after to make sure I get my height right. And then we're done for the day. It's late. It's actually four o'clock in the morning. Man, I haven't done this in forever. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am officially fried. It is 4.20 a.m. and uh, that's all I got. I, I'm done. I was done a long, I was done six hours ago. However, we have a rask handle with a detent ball pressed into the exact right height with it ground down to the exact right thickness. Actually, it's two, two tenths two, and three eight, whatever. Two tenths, uh, too thin, but for the grinding, but uh, that's plenty good enough. Um, but it'll be a bit better next time. I'm gonna go to sleep now. It is Father's Day weekend, so I'm actually gonna chill this weekend. I figured I'd, I'd put my rush in, my crush, get this done, make some awesome progress. It was great, actually. I learned a lot about Q parameters because when I probe and then I store the variable, I, sh I showed you that already. Um, that was good. That was a big kind of, not hurdle, because I know how to do it on the FANUC machines, but I needed to learn it and test it and practice it on the Kern and the Heidenhain, and I'm really, really, really glad that I did. So, that's good. That's huge progress. I'm going to use those skills later on, for sure. Anyway, happy Father's Day, and I will see you soon. Bye. Hey guys, it's Monday now, but I just wanted to give a quick update of this gun. So on Friday, you know, the whole video you just saw, um, I emailed them at 6.05 p.m. and like 14, 13 minutes later, they got back to me at 6.15 on a Friday. Um, awesome, awesome. And they, they were like, uh, we need that gun because this is the first time it's ever happened and our engineers are dying to see this, to see what happens. So awesome service, awesome feedback. Um, looking forward to, up. Apparently they said they've updated it like four times since I've gotten that one. So um, looking forward to seeing what they have. They're obviously going to send a, a replacement for free and they're taking care of us, which is excellent. So in no way was any of that trash talking. It was just a, uh, you know, honest, uh, honest uh, problem that happened. Problems happen all the time. The fact that they stepped up and are going to take care of it makes me really happy. So I'll keep you guys updated, but I just wanted to put this bit in this video um, and say they've been awesome. It's, it's Monday now, they called me this morning on my drive to work, and they're like, let's make this right. I'm so, you know, it's good, it's good. So anyway, on to today's vlog.